my poker peeps? It's the Hatter. And today, we're looking at a hand that I played last night online. We were playing 50 cent, $1 online. And as you can see, we got pocket rockets on the button. All right, let's jump right into the action here and see what goes on. All right, under the gun's going to fold. Hijack's going to fold. Cutoff's going to fold. Oh, ain't this how it always works, y'all? We finally get a big hand, and we're going to be in position, and we just ain't getting no action. But we're going to go ahead and open. We'd be opening pretty wide on the button anyways. And we've been a, we've been an action player a little bit because we've been catching some small hands here and there. So we're going to go ahead and open up for our standard 3X. And surprisingly, we're going to get called in by both blinds. So... With nine in the pot, we go to a flop of eight of diamonds, nine of hearts, two of diamonds. First thing that I realize here, or clicks in my head, is I blocked a nut flush draw with the ace of diamonds, which is good and bad. I mean, I kind of blocked one of the best draws, but it is what it is. So the small blind checks, big blind checks. And at this point, I'm going to go ahead and go a little over two-thirds, right at two-thirds. And the reason I decide on this sizing is if they have any type of connection to this board, whether it be like a straight draw, a flush draw, even though I blocked a nut flush draw, they could have diamonds. Or if they just have a pair, I definitely want to charge the max on the flop for them to draw these kind of hands. So we're going to go ahead and put out a bet of 750 and the small blind calls and the big blind folds. All right. So now with 24 in the pot, we go to a turn, which is the ace of spades. At this point, we know we got the best hand, so this is a little bit of overkill. So now I know I'm way ahead. And when he checks right here, now I'm definitely putting him on some type of draw. Or he may have a nine but or an eight, but I really think he's got a really weak or a draw right here. And what I'm trying to do is really get him committed on the river. So I go ahead and go a, a little less than half but pretty close to half. And I'm just trying to set up that he doesn't have much behind and hopefully we can get it all in on the river. I'm not sure if this is right. Maybe I should size up a little bit because of the draw and target the draw specifically. But if he had a weaker hand, I'm trying to get him to stick around and just string him along. So that's my thought process. And I bet out 10 and he goes ahead and calls. And at this point, I definitely think he's on a draw. And I'm trying to think of all the draws he could have. He could have, of course, seven, six, five, six for the gutter, which he may let the gutter go. He could have like Jack 10. Jack 10 is a real possibility here. Or who knows? Maybe, 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 I don't know. That's about all he could have, honestly. He could have like an eight or something. But, anyways, we go to the river, which is the queen of clubs. The first thing that pops in your mind is the fear because you get sucked out on so often. That's what your mind remembers is Jack 10 gets there. But outside of Jack 10, nothing else really comes in. I mean, he could just as easily have like queen nine or something. So when he goes ahead and jams right here, I do think about it for a second, but I'm never folding. I mean, if he has Jack 10, God bless him. So anyways, we settle on a call and we are shown the good news. He ends up having 10, seven. So he had to bust it draw and he bluffed at it. So good try by him. I'm not sure with the stack he had behind that he could ever get me off the hand unless, but I am at the top of my range too. So let me, y'all give me y'all's thoughts. All right. I'll see y'all tomorrow. Had her out. Gotta find my way to you